Hey, it's time to get down to brass tacks. Today, the HRT always, 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 the AWLS, the HRT flashlight with the nipple. Yeah, I bet most of you don't even know that HRT made a flashlight, but recently they reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to try out our AWLS? And I said, what? And they said the nipple light. And I said, oh yeah, yeah, sure. Say no more. So here we are. Full disclaimer on the table. They sent me this thing for free, and in return, I run it, give you my thoughts, you name it, and that is about that. The HRT AWLS is what I would call a second generation hyperthrow light, with the first being the mod lights, the Malkoffs, the Reigns, all pushing just around 50,000 give or take candelas. Like most things in the industry, we get iteration, and the HRT flashlight is doing exactly that, pushing an eye watering 90,000 candela with existing batteries while attaching a nipple to the back. This thing, for all of two months, was the best hyperthrow money could buy, performance wise, and then the Rain 3.0 came out beating it by like 10%. Review coming up on the Rain 3 as well. There's two components to this light. There's the light head and then the body, you know, the nipple. So we're going to start with the light head. Performance wise, the AWLS performance is boringly impressive. Viewing the light head in isolation, there's really not much to say beyond it's a better OKW, it's a better Malkov HXTL2, H2LT. What is with these? It's better than the Rain 2, uh, at least on paper. It's also beating the Surefire Scout Turbos, which was teased at SHOT Show, has yet to be released, took Surefire three years, and may already be out of date before it even hits shelves. Nah, I'm sure it'll be fine. We're not only getting more Candela with this thing, but also more lumens to boot. So we're not just getting more throw, but we're getting a corresponding increase in Flood, which is not insignificant. For the four of you that still buy Surefire or Dual Fuels for their performance and not the name, you guys know how nice Flood can be. Furthermore, the AWLS has a much warmer light color, for the lack of a better term, yellow, if you will, versus traditional types that are much more white or hot. HRT claims this more natural lighting, thus you kind of get more information. I've asked my group and a number of people what their thoughts on yellow versus white was, and I've gotten a pretty consistent consensus that there is no consensus of which is better or preferred. We didn't even agree that it was yellow, but it's a more warmer light color for sure. So while the body, don't worry, we'll get to that in a second, is semi-proprietary, the light head itself is actually standard. Uh, what do we even call that? Dual fuel pattern? So it fits on your Arasaka, your Malkovs, your Surefire dual fuel bodies. You know, the thing that takes the 18650s or the CR123s. So if you just want to buy the light head, and you can, you can just do that and put it on whatever existing body you already have. Now it's worth noting, Surefire literally cannot stop taking L's, so if you plug this into, say, a Surefire dual lead, you're going to get a noticeable current drop. And since this is much more high performing than legacy options on the market, you're going to get a noticeable loss in performance. However, if you take a moment to look at your cell phone screen, you'll actually also see that even with the Surefire switches, this actually outperforms an OKW with the current loss. The mod button is another option that you could use that isn't this body, and it also has a current drop, but everyone except Coleon Nimbus Defense tends to agree it's not nearly as significant or something you can really tell in person, and I noticed that with my testing as well. Runtime is a lot. On paper, the runtime is a about 100 minutes, which is industry standard. However, when I did a test, I think these things thermal throttle fairly aggressively, which actually, if you run it just straight out from zero to 100, or I guess it'd be 100 to zero, uh, it actually lasts significantly longer, so much so that my camera ran out of space. We were looking at like two hours. Anyway, full performance seems good, didn't blow up. The head can be had for about $200, which is industry standard pricing for a hyperthrow head. Actually, you say 10 bucks compared to the competition. <laughs> I've run the AWS for three night sessions and several day sessions, total of 500 rounds, which by no means is a long-term test. I think it's a generally good metric for basic longevity performance for a white light, because functionally speaking, the difference between 500, 1000, and 3000 is not even an order of magnitude. It's not all that difference for a device that fails due to cycles. And unfortunately, I cannot recoil cyclic test through this to even 10, 20, or 100k cycles, which is something we would actually need to test longevity under recoil. So this is one of those things that I kind of have to pawn off to the market. We'll see if it's going to last long term. TBD. So far, so good. That brings us to the other half of this light. The ODA. Operational Detachment. Ah, no, that's not it. That brings us to the ODA. The Valhalla Tactical Omnidirectical Activator. AKA the nipple. 
So you can buy the head only, or you can buy the head, and for about 100 bucks more, you get the M-Lock only body with the ODA, which is, you know, the nipple. Either 18350 small or the 18650 CR123 full size variant. I got the full size one. The ODA is not too dissimilar from an Enforce light that were all the rage back in the day uh, before they started disintegrating in mass. In theory, it's not too difficult to mount a white light tail cap setup onto your rifle. However, in practice, because of all the bullshit we put on our rifle, it rarely ends up that way, and you often run into issues where it's difficult to reach the light activator, it's too easy to reach the light activator, and you constantly put it into constant on. You name it, right? There's a reason why the industry trends towards tape switches, because they're simply more intuitive and easy to use in a standard firing grip. It's also far less natural to use a push button motion, which is pushing forward on the rifle, versus a tape switch, which is a squeezing motion, which is sort of already what you're doing when you're holding your rifle anyway. But tail caps absolutely offer us some benefits, and the fact that it is difficult to activate is generally a lot of the appeal. Reduce white light negligent discharges. Clear separation of IR laser activation and white light laser activation, right? They're not right next to each other. Enhance durability no loss of current, and in some cases, especially small weapons, it's the only thing you can do when there's no room for a tape switch. Here comes the ODA, and offers a middle ground via an omnidirectional tail cap. You can squeeze it, fondle it, or press it, as I'm sure you're all excellent at because you totally hang out with women, you get white light activation. You can even do a forward click motion to engage a constant on. Should you desire to get something a little less out there, you can unscrew the tail cap and you get a traditional recess cap underneath it. This is a fairly simple but elegant solution that gives us, once again, what is functionally a tape switch tail cap. Now the big downside is that we've massively increased the potential footprint and potential for white light accidental discharges. But in some scenarios or rifle setups, that is an acceptable trade-off. It's not like if you look at this thing, the light goes off, it is just more of a footprint. In the same way, a large tape switch also presents this risk. Personally for me, I think this type of light, light switch works really well with a SPR style weapon, so more of a daytime long gun, or a PDW PCC where you really would like not to have to fuck around with a whole ass tape switch assembly, but want a more readily accessible, faster tail cap. I generally wouldn't put this on a night vision equipped rifle because the white light is very much more utility and a backup option, and this thing is just a little too exposed for that. It's really more for a setup where the white light is the primary, you know, thing. You can get fairly creative with it, however. Uh, like, a lot of times I've seen the older style where you have a VFG and you wrap your thumb around to activate the light on the offside of the rifle. And this makes that ten times easier because you can just reach underneath and push up instead of trying to push forward. Also, rifles like this Militia Works Fixie that I have really is only functional with a tape switch if the light is mounted on the outboard position. However, if I put an ODA switch on it, I can kind of reach around underneath, you know, the, the old reach around, and uh, touch it with the tip of my fingers, which is already in that position because that's how I hold my rifle, and it opens up a whole new set of possibilities for how I use my light. Remember, we're not talking about necessarily having the light switch be accessible. That's true with most tail caps. That's easy. It's getting the speed, intuition, subconscious activation without the usage of a tail switch. So this is pretty cool, actually. There's just one final aspect that is really important to understand if you want to try out the ODA on your rifle. Because HRT uses a fixed body design, both ends of the body need to accommodate the head portion. As a result, the tail cap needs to function on the same threads the head does, and this presents some issues. Also, funnily enough, allows for this and whatever this is. Also, don't do this with the battery in it. It's a very stupid idea. But because the ODA tail cap is a very specific niche tail cap, that requires specific niche setups to want to use, but then the body it can mount on is by design a very unflexible design compared to contemporary options. It's M-Lock only, doesn't take surefire mounts, and it sits very high. In my limited sample size, this works with zero of my guns that have a laser aiming module on it. The only gun this works on is a sleek forend SPR, which is fortunately a good fit for this type of light activation, but it kind of makes this light follow in the footsteps of the cloud defensive owl a ginormous light meant to be mounted one specific way on one type of gun, which only uses white light. But with a little bit of tinkering, I think this thing could have a lot more potential. You can either make the ODA tail cap a surefire pattern, remove the backup tail cap if you have to, or you remove the fixed mount portion on the actual mount and put surefire screws in, 
This change would help a lot with AR-15 style weapons where you have to mount the light sort of around other enablers like lasers, iron sights, or whatever. But it's basically mandatory for smaller PDW or PCC style weapons that have near zero real estate and basically require a full-time job to figure out how exactly you're supposed to attach shit to them. PDW weapons in general really call for this type of tape switch, but as it stands, it's kind of hard because most of those do not have M-Lock or could fit this or both. Either of these solutions, changing the tail cap to work on scouts or changing the body, would help fix the versatility issue that I think this body design currently has. Uh, for now, it's a bit niche in my opinion because it doesn't really work on the things I want it to work. So be very sure this is actually going to fit on what you want to use. Real quick, we've, as always, have been distracted by nipple. The punchline is this. The ODA is cool, absolutely, and it sort of steals the show. But the HRT head, the always, no shit, the AWLS, is kind of what people have low-key been asking for in extreme Candela autism circles. Dude, it's a Rain 2.0, but instead of being married to a tape switch that is very controversial, you get a surefire dual feel head pattern, and you can do with it what you will. I have a Rain 3.0 on hand, and yeah, the performance is better. And that, in some cases, that's exactly what people want. But there's something to be said about user interface. And say what you will about Surefire, the ecosystem it's built up around itself has become as close to a standard as we're probably ever going to get. And the always, fuck, the AWLS works with that standard while delivering Ready? fairly close to the highest tier of performance. Oh, that's right, I have to cool, nice. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Appreciate the comments and the views. It really helps me keep going more than you think, right? YouTube is not just a monetary thing, it's also a morale thing, and it's an inherently risky lifestyle because, well, at any moment, YouTube can uh, crush the entire thing and uh, make this all end. So it's, I love the support, it really helps me go, uh, keep going. If you wanna support me directly, go to my favorite website, Subscribestar, where you click a button and transfer money from your bank account to mine. And you also get access to watch a podcast myself and Hop do. Uh, we try to aim for about two a month. Also, click this video. It's me and my friends, Hop, and, you know, another friend, playing Breakpoint while stupidly drunk. There's a whole seven-part series with that thing. All right, that's enough shillery. See you guys in the next one. What are your thoughts about the nipple? I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of fun to play with. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I see the marketing strategy here. <laughs> Freeze. Stop playing with the nipple. This I is a like, serious life-saving implement. I feel like it's going to increase the amount of white light NDs because someone's just going to want to fondle it. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it is what it is.